Good morning, and welcome to worship at Dwajek's First United Methodist Church. Tomorrow is Veterans Day, and I know that we have a lot of veterans in our congregation. Would you stand, please? Thank you for your service. I have a note that I have been asked to read from Reverend Katrinka Johnson, Connor Mayo, Emmy, African Methodist Episcopal. Dear pastor and members, we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You are all cordially invited to our fall revival being held on Wednesday, November 20th through Friday, November 22nd, starting at 6.30. We understand the importance of taking each and every opportunity to give the people of Cass County the chance to be revived, renewed, and restored so that they can move forward together in their lives on the right track set by our Lord. We are facing trying times in our community, state, country, and world. We at Connor Mayo believe it's time for us to let the Holy Spirit's fire revive us again. The winds of revival will pick up mo momentum and spread through the souls of the ones who want to seek the face of our Lord. This is a time where we can cross beyond cultural, ethnic, and denominational boundaries and attempt to reach those who are crying out for change crying out for healing, and crying out for peace. We say, come one, come all. Bring your family and friends with you. We do not want to leave anyone behind. I would add that on Wednesday, Pastor Chris will be the speaker, and our choir, those of us that can make it, will be singing. Bob, you said you had announcements. Good morning. How's everyone this morning? Great. Good to see you all. Uh, the trustees recently met uh, last Monday, and uh, we put together what we thought was a great idea for having a leaf cleanup uh, here at the church, get rid of all the leaves. While we prayed to the Lord and asked for guidance, we failed to include his calendar of weather events uh, when we said we wanted to do this next Saturday on the 16th. So tentatively, we want to try and uh, get all the leaves picked up next Saturday but with the current forecasts I'm seeing for all week, we just may not get that done. So I, I, I don't know exactly how we'll handle that, but uh, we are tentatively scheduling a, a leaf cleanup uh, next Saturday. And we'll probably start about 9 in the morning. We'll work till we're finished. But based on the snow we're supposed to get in the next couple of days and heavy rain, which is predicted for next Saturday, it just may not be doable. The other thing is... Um, some of you may remember in the past, or hopefully remember in the past, uh, a few months ago we had a, a little bit of repair work done to the organ, and we all enjoy hearing Scott play. We do. And we also found out back when we got that work done that there was a little bit more work that had to be done. In fact, a bit more work uh, to the tune of, uh, I believe it was around $6,700, Karen's nodding her head, yep. And we had about $2,000 left over from the original donations that came in when the first round of repair work was done. Well, the Finance Committee tells me that uh, through some, uh, I don't want to say negotiations, talking to people who had uh, some memorials that were available, that they're within about fourteen dollars to $1,500 of having that money secured to get the organ repaired. The uh, actual goal is to have that money secured right after the holidays, and that would be a good time to get that organ work done because it 
it's maybe a two or three week window that the organ will not be available while that work's being done. Uh, so I'm just asking if you have it in your hearts or you know of some extra funding that could uh, go towards the uh, last little bit we need to get the organ repaired, that would be much appreciated and we sure want Scott to have a, a quality piece of equipment to uh, continue to enjoy his music. Thank you, that's what I have. Now, if you'd like to stand and greet one another and pass the peace. Thank you for all finding your places. You what? Okay. Not everyone's finished visiting. <laughs> um, before um, we do the call to worship, I wanted to add or, or correct a, um, an announcement. The um, book study will take place Thursday morning. When we gathered Thursday, the bulletin was already made, and we decided that we wanted to go ahead and do the book study Thursday morning, and that'll make up for Thanksgiving, and it'll keep us on track. So if you are of a mind to join us Thursday morning at 10, please feel free to do so. OK. Now, call to worship. Holy Spirit, rain down on this place. Let our hearts overflow. Our opening hymn is found in your hymnal on 539. It is, O Spirit of the Living God. The words, of course, are on the screen as well.
Please be seated and join me in the litany. When the world divides us. When the world calls us orphaned. When the world leads us astray. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come and fill this place. I'd like to make a couple of comments about the hymn this morning, or our anthem. We have chosen a Battle Hymn on the Republic, which is an old, old hymn. It dates back to the late 18th century to the early 19th century. It originally was a song uh, from John Brown's body, or John Brown's song. And the lyrics and the music has changed over the years. But the one we're singing this morning is the most common one, and it was, the lyrics to this one was written 157 years ago. And the other reason we chose this song this morning was that we wanted to acknowledge tomorrow, November 11th, Veterans Day, and we will be celebrating the 100th anniversary of the first observance And so we would just like to, I would like to ask you that tomorrow we'd all take a moment and thank every service member that has served in the United States Armed Forces for their service and especially observe those that ultimately sacrificed fighting for our freedoms and that we are so blessed to be living under today. Thank you. Amen.
Good morning again. I'll try to stay up here this time. Um, our first reading is from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 through 6. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, mortal, can these bones live? I answered, oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. Um, please stand and sing where the spirit of the Lord is. It'll be on the screen or it's in the small book. Please be seated for the second reading. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Now, Concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, and to another, the, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, all these are activated by one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually just as the spirit chooses. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you. 
Will you pray with me? O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Amen. Pastor Chris has been preaching this fall on the Trinity. We started in September talking about the attributes of the Father. In October, we talked about Jesus and how he is manifested to us. And now in November, we're talking about the Spirit. Last week, Pastor Chris talked about the power of the Spirit as exemplified at Pentecost. This week, we're talking about gifts of the Spirit. I think all of us like getting gifts. I know I do. Have you ever gotten a gift that was kind of, say, a clunker or a dud, something that just wasn't right for you? Have you ever given one like that? I think most of us, if we're honest, would say yes. God's gifts are not like that. They are perfect. The best gifts that we get usually come from somebody that knows us pretty well and who knows us better than God. Spiritual gifts are a little different than tangible gifts. You can't wrap them up and put them in a box or a gift bag, but they have some things in common. The recipient of a gift decides how they're going to use that gift. If you tell somebody, oh, you've got to do this with it, that's not really a gift. And God doesn't tell us how we have to use the gifts that he gives us. He leaves it to our discretion. When we get a gift, sometimes you get some that say, some assembly required. We've all seen that. Spiritual gifts require some development. So you might say, some assembly required. Spiritual gifts are given not for our own enjoyment, but as Gloria read, They're given to be used for the good of the body. And now the ushers have some spiritual gift surveys that we would like to distribute. You don't have to take one. You don't have to do this. It's entirely voluntary. And it's for your own use. If you want to share with people, that's fine. Pastor or myself would be happy to talk to you about it, but that's at your discretion. Just because your score on a particular gift is not high doesn't necessarily mean you don't have that gift. You might have it and not have developed it. A few weeks ago, I had a conversation with my brother-in-law, Tim Vaughn. We got together and he was saying, what's new in your life? What's going on? And I told him that I was going to be preaching 
on November 10th, and he said, what's your subject? And I said, well, it's part of the pastor series. It's on spiritual gifts. And Tim said, I've done several workshops on spiritual gifts. And one of the exercises that we do in these spiritual gift workshops is that I pair people off and each of them makes two lists. One, what you see as your spiritual gifts. And the second, what do you see as your partner's spiritual gifts? And he said, very often, other people see gifts that you don't necessarily realize you have or that you haven't thought to try to develop. So I would encourage you, if there is a person who you consider someone discerning, who says, you're good at this, take it to heart. Some people would only list as spiritual gifts those things that are named in scripture. I take a broader view of spiritual gifts than that. My feeling is that all that we are and all that we have comes from God. So any ability that you have, if you're using it or you can use it, for the good of the body, and to bring glory to God, that's a spiritual gift. And you have my blessing to call it that. <laughs> it's a good thing to know what your spiritual gifts are. It's good to find ways to use your spiritual gifts to glorify God. God knows you intimately, and he also knows your situation. He knows what's needed where you are. So he provides perfect gifts. May it be so. Our hymn of response this morning is number 465, um, and it'll also be on the screen. to remember those listed on the prayer list on the back of the bulletin and I've been given one additional prayer request 
from Ruth Pickens. She says her stepdaughter Vicki needs prayer in the loss of her son Ammon. So shall we go to God in prayer? Lord, you know the needs of your people. You know who needs comfort. Vicki, we would particularly lift up. And our sister Karen in Jim's recent passing. And others that may be in our hearts. Lord, there are so many troubles in this world. You know them, and if there is some way that we can be a help, through your Holy Spirit, show us what you would have us do. And now, we pray the prayer that you taught us, Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Now is the time in our service when we are privileged to be able to share a small portion of the many gifts that God has given each one of us. Would the ushers come forward, please? generosity and for the generosity of the folk who've 
contributed part of what you've granted them. We pray that these gifts may be used to spread your word and bring comfort to your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Ah, and it's that time. Would you now please join us in our closing hymn by circling up and holding your neighbor's hand. Go forth from this place knowing that the Holy Spirit has given each of us gifts. Your gifts are not mine and mine are not yours, but we all need to be using them to bring, to bring glory and honor to the name of our God. Amen. <laughs>